Whenever I want to get a general overview of the crypto market, I'll typically go to a website like, say, CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko. And the problem with this is there's really nothing on this website that screams out to me, this has to be in a web browser, or really that this has to even be graphical. So for example, we have the rank of the coin, we have the name, the market cap, the price volume, and also a graph off to the side here. But this graph can very easily be remade with Unicode Braille characters. So nothing that's being shown here really needs to be in a web browser. So wouldn't it be easier to use a much lighter weight interface and maybe even something that runs in your terminal. And that's where something like Cointop comes in. And if you recognize the interface, that's because the interface was based on HTOP. So it should be familiar to you, but basically what this is gonna do is interact with the CoinGecko API and pull in the same sort of information you'd see on the website and just show you in a much, much simpler interface. So let's say that we wanted to go and add a new coin. So if we go back to the main screen, let's say that we're all of a sudden interested in something like Litecoin. Well, instead of having to go to the CoinMarketCap website and add it to our favorites on there, which we also need to make an account for, on this, all you have to do is say, okay, I like Litecoin now, I'm gonna add this to my favorites, and then we can go back to the favorites list and then Litecoin is now being listed in here and you don't need an account. All of this is just being saved locally on your system. So this is why I like using this application and I've been using it pretty frequently lately and I actually really like it. So let's go see what else it can actually do. So if you know anything about the crypto market, you might be saying, aren't these prices a little bit weird? So for example, the Bitcoin price right now, it says is 15,643. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who would love it to be that high. But the reason why it says that is because I've got it in Australian dollar mode right now. So the way that we go and switch that is, as you can see down the bottom here, there's a bunch of different bindings. The one that we're going to care about right now, though, is for conversion. So that is capital C. And what that does is brings up a list of coins that are supported in this application. So for example, we could have the price be in Bitcoin or the price be in Ethereum or Euro or British Pound. Or the one we're going to switch to now is US dollar. And the way we switch that is just press the character on the side. So for US dollar, that is going to be V. And then give that a second to reload. Sometimes it's a bit slower than that. Sometimes it's a bit quicker than that. It really depends on how stressed the API actually is and whether the value has actually been cached or not. So up the top here, you can see we have a graph. Now, the way we switch this graph isn't by just highlighting a different coin, because as you can see, we're highlighting Cardano right now, but the coin it's showing is Litecoin. So if we wanna go and have a look at the Cardano graph, all we have to do is select it and then press enter on it and give that a second to load. And there we go, now we have the Cardano graph. And it shows things like the market cap, the volume and the BTC dominance as well. And also we can go and switch the date range. And the way that we do that is by using the square bracket. So left square bracket will decrease the date range and then right square bracket will increase it. So as you can see, we're at six months now, we can go and change it in the other direction and that is year to date. And if you go past the last option, it's going to then loop back to the start. So as I was pressing the right square bracket, I hit the end of the list and then it's looped back over to 24 hours. So it is a cyclic list, which is always nice to see. Now, let's say the graph is a little bit too small for you. Let's say you want it to take up a bit more of the screen. Well, the way we can do that is by using Control J. Control J will make it bigger. Control K will make it smaller. And the reason why it's Control J and Control K is to move around the interface, you do J and K. So obviously they can't be on the same key and it just makes sense to then put them on the control versions instead. So J and K moves around the interface and Control J and Control K basically resizes the graph. But let's say you don't care about the graph whatsoever and you just wanna hide it. Well, we can hide it by just pressing backslash and that's gonna then make it just disappear. One other thing that might be useful is loading up the web page for any of these coins because there is a lot of information on here, but if you need some extra information like what exchanges you can buy it on or I don't know, other, other information that isn't being shown here. What we can do is let's say we wanna look at, I don't know, Ethereum. If we go and press O on Ethereum, what that's gonna do is open up the CoinGecko page for Ethereum. And for some things, this will be more convenient. For other things, it's just going to be better to use the terminal application. Most of the time, I don't really use this key, but if you need to use it, then the key is there to use. 
Now, there's a reason why I have my default page set to my favorites page, and that's because CoinGecko actually has a lot of coins that you have literally never heard of. So, for example, as you can see on here, we have things like, what is this, buying houses over crypto, probably? I don't, I don't know what its full name is. Or we have Optical Network, or Bill, BitGuild Plat, or... Voitech bear coin a bunch of coins that you have never heard of probably because you either can't purchase them or they're gifted out on various platforms or for whatever reason they just have a zero market cap so all of these coins here basically have a zero market cap and there's a lot of pages of them i think there's like 14 pages something like that let's go find bitcoin so if we do a slash that will then bring up the search so let's search for bitcoin and bitcoin is currently 12 pages in Okay, so my recommendation is find the coins that you care about and then add them to your favorites. So let's say that we are really into Chainlink right now, for example. Well, if we want to add that to our favorites, what we can do is press F or spacebar and basically they're going to do the same thing. So pick whichever one you like pressing. So I'll press F on it. And what that's going to do is basically set the name to be yellow and then put an asterisk off to the side basically saying, okay, this is now in your favorites list. And the reason why I don't think this is that big of a deal is because most of the time, you're probably not going to care about most of the coins that exist. You're going to care about the coins that you have some investment in or you have some interest in. And if you have some interest in them, just add them to your favorites list and then just have a shortened down list of the things you actually want to use. So I'm back in my favorites list now, and another thing that we can do is go and change the ordering of these coins. So by default, it's going to be ordered by rank, but as you can see, there are other things we can order by as well, and the way you switch to those is basically press the key that is in the square bracket. So let's say we want to order by price. So if I just press P, that will then switch to price-based ordering, and press P again, and that will change the direction of the ordering. So right now, BitTorrent is at the top because BitTorrent has the lowest price and Bitcoin is at the bottom. We switch that again. Bitcoin is at the top and then BitTorrent is at the bottom. Okay. Or we can order by things like, you know, volume or we can order by available supply or last updated, various things like that. It's pretty straightforward how that works. Now, another thing that is really, really useful and I'm actually, I'm not using the feature right now, but it is actually a really cool feature is the portfolio feature. So what the portfolio feature is gonna do is it's similar to the favorites page, but you also assign the amount of coin that you say that you own. And basically the reason why you do that is so you can keep track of how much your holdings are actually worth. So right now, I don't think I actually have anything in the portfolio, but let's go back to the favorites and let's say we wanted to add something like uh, BitTorrent, for example. So the way that we add something to our portfolio is by just pressing E on it. So E for edit, I guess, would be the way you describe that. So press E on it anyway. And then you're going to have to put in the amount of holdings you have. So let's just say that I have, I don't know, 500,000, which might sound like a lot, but it's only like a couple hundred dollars. So press enter on that. And then if we go over to the portfolio, as we can see, it shows the price, it shows the holdings, and then it also shows how much that is actually worth. So this will let you actually keep track of how much it's worth without having to go and do the math yourself. It's just a bit of an easy way to handle it. And if you want to go and remove something from your portfolio, what you do is just press E on it and then set the amount that you hold to nothing. If you set it to zero, it's still going to be in your portfolio. It's just going to say that obviously it's not worth anything. So if we go and remove the value in here, then it will actually be removed from the list. And as we can see, to actually set that value, we can just press enter. Pretty straightforward. It's nothing I really had to explain. So I brought up the fact that this application supports J and K to move around, but those aren't the only VIN bindings supported in this application. If we go to a page that has more pages on it, let's say we wanted to cycle through all the pages of coins. Well, we can do this with arrow keys, so left and right, or we can do this with H and L. So H obviously is going to go left and L is going to go right. We can also go to the first page by pressing zero, and we can go to the last page by pressing dollar. Cool. So that's not all though. We can also go to the first line by pressing lowercase g and the last line by going and pressing capital G. Now that's the first and the last line on the page that you're on. And we also have 
capital H to go to the top of what's visible on the current page, capital L to go to the bottom of what's visible, and capital M to go to the middle. But those aren't all the bindings. You can also see the rest of the bindings by going to the help menu. As we can see, we can get to that by pressing the question mark. And there's a bunch of other bindings in here. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but they're all pretty straightforward what they do. Just have a read through them and it should be pretty easy to get a hang of how this application actually works. So I've mentioned CoinMarketCap a few times throughout this video, and I've said that CoinGecko is the API being used, and there's a good reason for that. So if we go over to the config file, I'll show you what that is. So if we go into the config directory and down to the CoinTop folder and into the config.toml file. So in this file, everything that you configure in the application is going to be saved here. So if you go and say change the currency or you want to change the default view, all of that will be saved in this file. Now, for the default view, I think you actually have to modify this from the file, but there's a couple of things you can modify in the application like the currency or also like things such as your favorites list and your portfolio that can actually be done from the application or from the file. So with the CoinMarketCap API, you need to have a CoinMarketCap Pro account. So if we look down the bottom here, it says Pro API Key. And to actually get a Pro account, you have to have a paid account on CoinMarketCap. Now, I don't know what benefits that get you besides having the Dev API. I don't really see anything that CoinGecko does that is worse than CoinMarketCap. Maybe there's something I'm not getting that the Pro people get. I don't understand it. I don't really see any reason why I'd want to switch from CoinGecko to CoinMarketCap. So I would recommend just leaving it on CoinGecko, but if you do want to switch over and you do actually have a CoinMarketCap Pro account, then what you have to do is go into your dev account and generate an API key and just dump it in here. I don't have a Pro account, so I can't show you how that's actually being done, but I'm sure there's videos online about how to do that. So another thing you can do in here is go and actually modify your favorites directly. So in here, basically this is just a list of the names of each of the coins. Now it is a little bit annoying that it isn't a list of the shortened down names of the coins. So like BTC or ADA, it's the actual full names, which does make it a little bit harder to actually modify this list. But you can actually go and modify this list directly. You don't have to do it inside of the application. And the same is going to be true for your portfolio as well. You can do it directly from this. You don't have to do it in the actual application. And we can also go and modify the key bindings as well. So every single key binding you saw in the help menu can be configured in here. And it's, it's pretty straightforward how you do it. So if you want to go and change move down to be something else. So right now it's set to down. If we want it to be set to eight, all we have to do, set the value to eight, and then you press eight and you can move down. Pretty straightforward, doesn't need to be explained too much. One thing I did skip over is the color scheme. So by default it is set to coin top. And the way that you get the extra color schemes is you have to go, or at least if you want the default color schemes, go to the coin top colors repo. So that is this one right here. And there's a couple of themes to find in here. So we have things like coin top, which is the default one, obviously. Or we have crimson, grayscale, homebrew, iceberg, Mars, or the other one is matrix and synthwave and x-ray. So if you want to use any of the default color schemes, feel free to do that. If you want to go and download these, basically just download the GitHub repo. And then to actually set the theme, basically just pass in the path to where the theme is actually located. If you want to go and make your own custom theme, as I always recommend, go look at one of those default themes and then base it off of that. So the colors you can actually use are just the default eight terminal colors. You can't do things like the 256 colors supported by your terminal, or you can't do things like true color. The only things that are supported in the color scheme are these basic eight colors, which is a little bit annoying, but I guess I can live with it. So since we're already on the GitHub page, let's just have a look at how to get it installed. So you can always obviously go and install it from source and that is being done with GoGet. There's the binary available on the releases section of the GitHub page as well. You can install it with Homebrew if you're on macOS. You can install it as a Snap if you're on Ubuntu or other things where you want to use Snaps for whatever reason. You can install it with Copper if you're on Fedora. You can install it from the AUR, which is the method that I took. You can install the Flatpak version. You can install it with fresh ports if you're on various forms of BSD. 
and you can also install it on Windows through using GoGet. And there is also a Docker wrapper thingy available as well. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to say about this. As I said earlier, I've been using Cointop a lot recently. It is actually a massive improvement over what I had before because all I did before was opened up the Coin Market Cap website just to look at some prices and then closed it. And if my account wasn't logged in, well, I wouldn't have my favorites list and then I couldn't look at the specific coins that I actually wanted to look at. So that was always annoying. It's much easier just to have those coins saved locally on my system. And then when I actually load up the application, it'll just load up that list and always knows what my favorite coins are going to be. So I like this application and I would really recommend it to anyone who frequently uses the terminal and also partakes in various things that you can do with crypto. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinian, Craig, Nathan, Andrew, Montazar, Joseph, Peter D. Road, Tony, Donald, John, Mikel, Spagin, Thais, and Zilva. If you want to go support the channel, there'll be some links down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel or anything else you want. And I'll get a small kickback for it. Also, remember to go check out my podcast that is Tech of a Tea, available on Library, YouTube, and various other platforms as well. And this channel available on library, BitChute, BitChute, and a couple others as well, but you probably don't care about this couple others on like Facebook and Daily Motion. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.